Hi, my name is Ashley and I live in Southern Ontario, Canada. I have two forms of mast cell disease. I have mast cell activation syndrome and I also have something called hereditary alpha tryptasemia. Hereditary alpha tryptasemia is newer to the mast cell world. It's only been a matter of less than five years that it's really been um, starting to get diagnosed in individuals. I started experiencing mast cell symptoms back in 2009. My first main symptom was body itch from head to toe, um, literally my eyelashes, everything so itchy. The doctors weren't able to figure it out for about maybe a year and a half. Um, I was then sent to uh, my internist who I still see to this day and he sent me right to an allergist and my allergist the first time he seen me after hearing all the different things I experienced he said he had an inkling that I may have some sort of mast cell condition sent me for some testing which included testing uh, my blood tryptase level which was elevated um, so indolent systemic mastocytosis was my diagnosis for years However, I would see some hematologists and some of them would disagree with the diagnosis. My bone marrow did show um, scattered mast cells, but technically for an actual diagnosis, it's supposed to say that the mast cells are kind of clustered together. So then it was kind of just kept being said since 2016 that I had mast cell activation syndrome. I was sent to Toronto and seen a mast cell specialist. The first time I seen him said he kind of had an inkling that I may have something else, something called hereditary alpha tryptasemia, which I personally, who am very involved in mast cell awareness, never heard of before. So it was up to me if I wanted to spend the money and get the genetic testing completed, and I did, and it did come back that I do have the gene that diagnosed me with hereditary alpha tryptasemia. So tryptase um, is constant releasing too much histamine, into your bloodstream, which causes you to have an overload of mast cells and you pretty much react to things that a normal person wouldn't react to. I was told that I have multiple copies of the gene, which was why I seem to have pretty much all the like co-conditions and symptoms that can come along with it. So hereditary alpha tryptasemia can cause you to have hypermobility, which I have um, type 3 EDS, which is hypermobile EDS. So loose joints, loose locations, it can cause you to have gastrointestinal dis conditions, disorders. I have severe gastroparesis and intestinal dysmotility. It can cause you to have autonomic nervous system dysfunction, which I have over the years. With a lot of mast cell conditions especially mast cell activation syndrome typically there is something that may have brought the condition out in you i have a friend who his condition came out after he was affected with lyme disease so i was always kind of hopeful that maybe we could figure out what caused it was it something like a vaccine that i had because i had a vaccine before i went to the dominican and my symptoms all started um, shortly after that um, but getting diagnosed with hereditary alpha tryptasemia now kind of gave us the final I guess clarification that it's something that's in your genetics and unfortunately it's something that I'm gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. There is no treatments for hereditary alpha tryptasemia. It is mainly symptom management. The main medication they do put people on that have the condition is called Zolaire. My doctor said hopefully in a few years there'll be some clinical trials and that we can try that sort of thing but it is a very new condition. Treatment options are very limited. Mast cell disease affects my daily life greatly. It limits what I'm able to do socially. It has been for a long time, especially the past four to five years. Being around people that are wearing cologne or perfume is a huge trigger for me. It makes me feel very ill. And it seems like everywhere you go, the world is very scented. So it's very hard to avoid triggers when one of your main sensitivities and symptoms of the condition is sensitivity to scents. I'm not able to tolerate um, many foods or drinks without having some sort of type of reaction. Some of my worst mast cell disease symptoms is definitely random reactions that can vary from like you know a slight reaction all the way up to anaphylaxis and the challenge with that is sometimes you don't even know what you're reacting to. A lot of times we can pinpoint the trigger but a lot of times we can't. My reactions can include anything from a headache, to burning in my eyes, itchy throat. For me, I notice reactions coming on. If my sinuses and my ears and my throat just feel really full all of a sudden, 
Um, there's so many different types of reactions, which is important to put up there as well. Because a lot of people think if you have an allergic condition, that your allergic reactions are simply like swelling of the eyes, lips, of the throat, throat closing, that sort of thing, which yes, definitely it's part of it. But there's so many different types of symptoms that come along with a mast cell condition. The worst I experience is definitely what happens if I consume something orally. So the symptoms start, I start feeling sick, I get itchy, my stomach bloats, I get a lot of trapped air. It just like the list goes on. I, I experience a lot of flushing myself, especially in my chest and neck area. I'm very sensitive to medications. So basically it seems the only type of medications I do tolerate are H1, H2 receptors, which are used for mast cell conditions and like Benadryl, oral, and IV. I can't take Tylenol. I don't tolerate any pain meds, which is hard when you have conditions that cause you to be in a lot of pain. So like I said, the disease is very, very challenging to live with. A lot of people manage their conditions differently. As we know, no two people experience a condition the exact same way. I manage my mast cell disease um, by taking a lot of medication to keep me stable. So I take H1, H2 receptors, both twice a day. I take oral Benadryl, which is a liquid liquid form, and I take that, I don't know, I probably take like almost 200 milligrams. It's pretty much a good day. If I'm having a bad day, I take more than that. Now that's a high dose of Benadryl. I also have IV Benadryl that I use to push into my central line that I have in my chest for reactions that I can't seem to calm down otherwise, and obviously an EpiPen is always an option as well. Um, another way I manage my condition is to avoid eating and drinking. Um, there's a couple of things I can eat without having a mast cell reaction, but the list is like literally two items. So I manage my nutrition by receiving IV nutrition and IV hydration over a 12 hour period every day, and I get that infused through my central line. I also manage the condition just by doing my best to avoid triggers. So that can include um, knowing where I can and can't go publicly. Um, there are some stores that I can manage if I'm wearing a mask or I'm not in too long, but then there's some stores I know I cannot go into that store. I will have a reaction. That's a challenge in itself because you want to be able to go places and do things. Anybody who has a mast cell condition will tell you the main thing they do to control the condition is to avoid their triggers as best as possible. Mast cell disease has taught me that life is so unpredictable. I was literally did not feel any mast cell symptoms besides seasonal allergies until 2009 and then it just like slowly went downhill over the years so you just never know what can happen. Well, I've learned that you can't take advantage of the little things and you have to be grateful for the little things such as being able to go to a store without have a reaction or not worrying about going to a social event because you know people will likely be wearing perfume and cologne. It's taught me not to take anything for granted. I hope other people who watch this video and see awareness posts about mast cell diseases will understand that they are lucky to be able to do little things like that. So never take anything for granted no matter how small and normal it may seem to you. My symptoms started at birth. I would get seizures and the pediatrician told my mother to use all hypoallergenic products, both cleaning and bath. And as a kid, I've always, as an adult, I've, I've struggled with extreme temperatures. As a kid, I wasn't allowed to be outside for more than like 60 minutes without having to come back in and get fluids, rest and get sunscreen reapplied. And I hated it. You know, we could go to the lake and none of the other kids had to come back inside, but I did. Anytime I spent time with friends, my mom would have a conversation with their parents, letting them know. The pediatrician said that I was allergic to the sun, which I remember thinking was awfully dramatic until later when I realized that that was kind of true. I went into, I was constantly flushing, like my cheeks would turn bright red and it embarrassed me. I didn't like having my pictures taken around 14, my symptoms kind of died down. And I was later told that I went into partial remission because of puberty and more specifically estrogen. I started getting symptoms between 25 and 26. And one of the first symptoms I noticed was severe itchiness at night. I, at first I thought it was like, I tried everything. I bought new detergent, new detergent, new um, fabric softener. I bought new pajamas. I bought new bedding. 
and nothing worked. My niece was actually dying at the time and she was in Arizona and I went, I flew down to Arizona to be with her. And it wasn't until I got back to North Carolina that it clicked with me that it didn't matter where I slept. I was itchy at my sister's house. I was itchy at my cousin's house. I was itchy at my aunt's house, no matter what. It didn't matter what I did. The flushing came back with a bam, so to speak. And I had a few symptoms, like there was the itchiness, the flushing, and then the GI symptoms were what prompted my dysautonomia provider to do a test, to test my tryptase and uh, histamine levels. And they came back high, elevated. Um, my first tryptase level was in the 30s and my hospital would not treat that. I was told that they, like nobody would treat me. They refused. They literally flat out refused. So I had to go to a different hospital and I had a bone marrow biopsy in 2016, which surprisingly enough didn't hurt as much as I was expecting it to. But it's just been awful for two years, two and a half, two to three years. I was on very high doses of steroids at, on a daily basis, which caused significant weight gain, puffiness, and it also causes mood swings, which people don't always warn you about. Starting in 2016, I was having all kinds of issues. I couldn't doing simple things like going to the grocery store to, I don't know, pick up trash bags or something. If I passed somebody that had like perfume or cologne or just came across something that triggered, like the next thing I knew my face would be swollen, be covered in hives. And I often say it looks like I have a venereal disease of the face or like I have some communicable, like awful disease. My partner used to hate, like he hated when I said that until he saw the pictures. Was like, yeah, it really does kind of look like that. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go out anywhere without the risk of reacting. I, in during the winter, it was really cold and I had to take Vaseline basically and literally slather it all over my face to act as a barrier between my skin and the cold weather. If I didn't do that, I would start to react. My face would start to swell. I react to my own sweat. I react to my own tears. I was started on uh, Plaquenil in 2017 and I also started Zolaire in 2017 both of those things have helped we've gone up on my Zolaire dose twice now and there's not much more not much further we can go up after this I'm now getting it every two weeks it's generally every four I'm assuming that I, I don't know if I can do it every week. If I can, then I'll end up doing that. If not, we'll have to find something else. And we honestly don't know what else to do that doesn't involve severely suppressing my immune system. It's just, I kind of got the, the short straw, so to speak. I am grateful to have the providers that I do and I'm grateful to have been caught, you know, once I started, once the symptoms came back, for it to have been caught so early most people with my list of diagnoses go years and years and years without any answers now technically speaking i did kind of go years and years without an answer but i also went into partial remission and just grateful now to have been diagnosed as quickly as i was and to get those labs just to get things get the ball rolling not everybody has that same luxury. You don't always know what's going to trigger you. Sometimes I have no idea. There are times, like, I could be exposed to something or take something a hundred times and be just fine. And, you know, the hundred and first through fifth, I, you know, my face swells up and I have an anaphylactic reaction and then never react to that particular thing again. We don't know. It's kind of just the luck of the draw, unfortunately. And I have to I have to pay attention. Like there are things that I know are known triggers. I'm very sensitive to scents. My face will just explode. Like it'll just break into hives and it will start swelling. My temperature goes up and I was told that it's just my immune system is basically just kind of working really hard, working extra and it's causing inflammation, which unfortunately has caused a lot of other issues. And so we're, it's, it's treatment for it is and has been trial and error. Hi, my name is Sarah Soilar. I'm 17 years old and I live in Orange County, California. I have cutaneous mastocytosis because of the urticaria pigmentosa lesions all over my body. And I was diagnosed back at the Mayo Clinic a year ago at 16. And they found all the lesions all over my body, the urticaria pigmentosa. The worst symptoms I would have to say are the boils and the lesions because they're all over the body and they're open lesions and they really hurt. And Typical day for me with the mast cell reaction is bone pain, diarrhea, vomiting, lesions, itching, anxiety. 
cramps, fainting, dizziness. It has taught me how to be a stronger person and it's just a really hard disease that we need to get more awareness about. Even with mast cell activation syndrome needs awareness as well. Mastocytosis needs awareness as well. So hopefully together we can find a cure.